Thank you, Devesh boss. A very warm good evening to everyone. Can somebody share the slide? So, uh, probably Rust can will be the new uh, wonder drug in the kitty as uh, the data suggests us. Uh, because uh, the data is very beautiful and it has changed our uh, DM training teaching, which we usually hammer at every level that how to do plus do a fish. If it is negative, it is negative. There is no role of anti -hydrotherapy. So having said that, we will sail through the data available and how we can use this drug in our current scenario. Next slide, please. So these will be the topics. As I already told that we are hammered during our DM days that what is HER2 positive, but HER2 low is a new drug, new thing in the kitty. So we'll discuss that. Then how the drug works. Then the uh, uh, second line, Destiny Best 04 study design. We will see how the drug has uh, shown the efficacy, safety, and quality of life. Then how to modify the drug because it's a new drug in the kitty. And basic AE management, which we probably learn better when we use the drug, but still few drugs, uh, few uh, side effects are uh, newer than other anti, anti agents. So we'll discuss in brief, uh, and then we will discuss the practical uh, administration guidelines, and then we will move to summary. Next slide, please. So as you all know, next slide, please. As you all know, uh, that uh, estimated five years survival across the globe is around 25% uh, in metastatic breast, breast cancer and it remains an, an incurable disease. Uh, even in the hormone receptor positive setting, it becomes a chronic disease, but it is still a non-curable disease. Next slide, please. So this is what we have taught that you do a ERP or HER2 key 16 on each of every other patient. If IHC 3 plus, it's a HER2 positive. IHC 2 plus, it's uh, you have to do a fish by uh, fluorescent in situ hydration. If it is positive, then it is HER2 positive, treat like that. If it is negative, then it was HER2 negative around two years back. Next slide, please. So coming to the, uh, the more uh, uh, sort of the drug, which is hormone receptor positive treatment, which you usually think or say our patient in routine OPD, that this disease is manageable. We have effective treatment even without chemotherapy. Having said that, if we see, if we see the data, then uh, we will probably see that if patient is having hormone receptor positive disease, the first line treatment will control the risk for 28 months, second line for 16 months more, and third line will be 66 months or less months. So, and if you go to the hormone sector negative, or the patient who are actually not hormone responsive, which, which is a 30% of the patient which progress on whatever combination we give with hormone. So these patients, first line treatment will suffice for eight months to six months, then second line treatments will fall below six months to two months, even with the advanced therapy. And third line treatment is two months. So median survival with TNBC is 10 to 13 months. Next slide, please. So, coming to the Destiny West 04 uh, design, study design, so here what they come, came up with is that if a patient who has, is a HER2 low exposure, what they meant by HER2 low exposure, if it is IHC 1 plus positive or if it is IHC 2 plus and H negative, so which were negative previously, they told that it is HER2 low and the trial agent in Destiny, Destiny uh, 04 study, introduced. And this constitutes 50% of all metastatic breast cancer. And they ha this has opened a new arena for our patient for treating them with a targeted therapy. Next slide, please. So, next slide, please. So, here we can see that high to low background is around 50% of the patient in metastatic breast cancer center. Next slide, please. So how does TDXD work actually? So it's a basically antibody drug conjugate, which we standardly understand and the most commonly used drugs are uh, TDM1, which we already have. So here we have a two directed uh, uh, delivery agent, which actually have two main things. It's a, it has a more potent topolimus 1 inhibition payload, which is 10 times more potent than the Alitecan itself. And the uh, uh, membrane permeability of uh, this agent allows the agent to diffuse across the cell membrane and kill the adjacent drug by a uh, uh, site uh, by a escobal effect. 
Second thing is the tumor selective T virus linker. So these drug molecules release the linker when the drug reaches, reaches into the tumor cells only. Next slide, please. So here we can see that the target is HER2, the antibody which we all know that are trastuzumab, and the payload is exotican derivative, which is a topoinous one inhibitor. The antibody in that two drug ratio is 8 to 1, and the uh, linker is cleavable, which is tumor selective. And this is evidence of a bystand lipid because the payload is actually here in a lipid solubility. So it goes to the adjacent cells and kill uh, more cells. Next slide, please. So here uh, the agent works. It goes into the uh, binds to the R2 and it goes to the endocytes. It is internalized and the linker uh, breakage occurs the uh, in the, through the action of lysosomal enzyme and it gets released through the cleavage. And DDXT causes the targeted DNA damage and apoptosis by topomer isomerase 1 inhibition. And uh, it, it causes the, the, the neighboring cells also to kill because it is a lipid soluble agent. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. So, coming to the destiny breast 0 for study design. Next slide, please. So here, uh, it was a phase three open label multicentric trial where uh, HER2 low patients, which were unacceptable or metastatic breast cancer, have been exposed to at least one line of chemotherapy in the metastatic setting. Uh, patient with hormone receptor disease, positive or considered, who were uh, endocrine refractory and who received the chemotherapy in the metastatic setting or have developed disease recurrence during or within six months of completing adjunct chemotherapy. Uh, patient with hormone receptor positive, this must have received more than one line of endocrine therapy. The study design was 2 to 1 randomization to TDXD, which is a dose of 5.4 mg per kg every three weekly. And with the physician of cho physician choice chemotherapy, which usually we give capacitamine, aerobinin, gemcitabine, patriotaxel, and napatida. So the primary endpoint was PFS. The key secondary endpoint was PFS uh, by uh, for all patients. OS, OS for hormone receptor positive and OS for all patients. Additional secondary endpoints are safety. Next slide, please. So these are the demo demographic data in the interest of time. I will just briefly say that these were well balanced, uh, well maintained, and almost equal patient was R2, R2 1 plus and R2 2 plus, which was each negative. Almost 40 patient in the R2 uh, fish negative arm. And almost 58, 58 to 60 percent patient in the R21 plus one. And almost all the patients were hormone receptor positive. Negative were very less. Next slide, please. So, uh, with the metastasis data, the metastasis patient was almost similar in both the study. Lung patient was almost similar, 30 percent. Liver was also uh, similar, slightly more in the TDXD arm, 70 percent versus 66 percent. Next slide, please. So coming to the lines of therapy, so this was also well balanced as we can see with the forest plot of this uh, bar diagram. Next slide, please. So the efficacy data, next slide, please. So coming to the uh, primary endpoint, which was PFS, so as we can see the TDXD, the median PFS was 10.1 months. With the chemotherapy, as we all know, it is nearly six months in uh, various metastatic first line settings. And if you can see the OS, so the OS was almost 24 months versus 17.4 uh, months in the chemotherapy alone arm. So as you can see that almost doubling of the uh, uh, PFS in the TDXD arm and the HR, uh, the almost six months improvement in the overall survival in the, uh, and the PL was significant uh, in both the analysis. Next slide, please. So, uh, in all her to low patients, uh, the all the the hazard ratio of uh, her to low MDC in all patients were similar in TDXD arm versus chemotherapy arm in uh, the in independent review analysis, as we have seen in the previous slide. Next slide, please. So, as we can see that uh, in this forest plot that all the subgroup were uh, uh, 
pairing with the TDC arm, except uh, the race where the patient was only uh, 37. That's why probably the confidence was higher and it was not uh, on the sim similar side of the uh, TDXT. Next slide, please. So, TDXT tripled the overall response rate, which was uh, never, uh, never imaginable in this sort of setting. Almost 52% uh, percentage of response rate in the uh, hormone receptor group and 50% in the hormone receptor negative group. On the comparison, chemotherapy was having a mainly response rate of 16%. And the, clinic, the duration of response was also uh, almost double or 150% of the standard chemotherapy. Next slide, please. Uh, as you can see, that there was a huge uh, response rate also uh, in uh, as IHC 1 plus 2 plus patients, whether they were hormone uh, negative. Uh, and we can see that there was deeper responses also. Also, we can see that CR was there uh, on the tune of 8 to 10%. Next slide, please. So the mandatory subunit I showed that there was uh, uh, hormone negative, her to low MC patient also shared uh, response with improvement is uh, median PFS was 8.5 months versus 2.9 months with the agile ratio of 0.46 with median OS improvement in uh, this uh, negative subgroup, uh, hormone negative subgroup was 18.2 months versus 83, 8.3 months and overall response as we have seen that 50 months, 50 percent versus 16.7 months. Next slide, please. Coming to the safety data. Next slide, please. So nausea, as we, as as we all know that usually the antibody drug, uh, drugs are uh, mild to moderate uh, emetogenic, but here this drug is uh, one thing to monitor that this drug is highly emetogenic as per Haskell. So the most common side effect which was seen was nausea, then followed by fatigue. And there was skin reactions which was also there, alopecia and neutropenia was also seen with this. And one more significant side effect which we will see with this is ILD. Next slide, please. So pneumonitis, uh, including grade 5 cases, are reported with TDXD in destiny, uh, breast 0.4. Uh, although the majority side effect was grade 1 to 2, but yes, there were uh, uh, few patients who had grade 5 side effect, uh, uh, means the number was 3, and uh, other patients, almost uh, 40 year patient, did have uh, the uh, side effect which were uh, grade 1 to grade 3 in pneumonitis. So almost 12% patient had pneumonitis, and uh, grade 3 were 5. And 82% patient of ID LID were grade 1 or 2. Median time to onset of pneumonitis is 129 days. It can be seen at uh, day 26 from day 710. So pneumonitis is a concern with this new drug. Next slide, please. Depends so coming to slightly, the quality of life data. Detail yes, sorry, slightly uh, the slide passed. Sure, sir. Next slide, yeah. please. So, quality of life in the form of uh, and the fatigue parameters, nausea and vomiting were almost well managed uh, as per the URTC 12C C30 scores. Next slide, please. Coming to the dosing and distribution. Next slide, please. So, as we all know, that the recommended dose is 5.4 mg per kg every three weekly, and the initial dose should be administered at 90 minutes. and if the prior infusion is well tolerated, we can give the next dose in 13 minutes. Next slide, please. Coming to the dose modification, if patient had uh, side effect, then we can go to the first dose uh, reduction of 4.4 mg per kg. If there is further side effect, then we should uh, go to 3.2 mg per kg, and then we can uh, discontinue the treatment. Next slide, please. So coming to the uh, dose modification for specific ADRs. Next slide, please. So if ILD grade 1 uh, pneumonitis is there, we should interrupt. And if resolve within 4 weeks, we should uh, reinstate the drug with a uh, lower dose. If it is grade 2 or more, we should uh, omit the drug. Neutropenia, if it is grade 1 or 2, we can probably interrupt. Grade 3, interrupt uh, until resolve grade 2 and there is a need of dose modification. If there is a programmed neutropenia which is documented, 
then probably we have to interrupt uh, the drug and uh, dose interrupt. If there is grade 3 uh, thromocytopenia is there, uh, till grade 3 we should interrupt the drug and then probably maintain the same dose. If grade 12 is there, probably we should uh, decrease the drug uh, by one parameter. Next slide, please. Coming to the ejection section, uh, so probably we all know with the trastuzumab map how to monitor this and how to do this. Next slide, please. Coming to the AE management, next slide, please. So I will just brief uh, about the, every, everyone knows about the nausea and vomiting. So I will just brief uh, uh, with the data of ILD, which is a new side effect. As we know that uh, it is a highly hematogenic agent, so we should manage it as such, how we manage a highly hematogenic drug. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. So coming to the ILD, so there is an ILD we should actually monitor each patient with SpO2 before each cycle and probably some breathing test like a 6-minute walk test or, or some single breath count test. And probably we should do a DLCO every three months, uh, uh, in between every three cycles. And if the patient has ILD, or, and we should do also HRCT every three, uh, after every three cycles to monitor for ILD. Next slide, please. So uh, for ILD, first thing is drug, drug discontinuation. Then probably immunosuppressive therapy, what we do for various uh, ILD, like steroid, we can give antibiotic for concomitant infection and we can use Sepran to rule out or control optionic infection. Supportive management as we will do for ARDS and probably major depression will uh, uh, respond to the treatment and then probably we can monitor with the help of a pulmonologist. But the bottom line is we have to monitor for IND so that we can manage the patient better. Next slide please. So this is a summary of what we had discussed. Next slide please. So we have to do monitor, lung examination, respiratory function test, oxygen saturation, and HRCT as I have this. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. This is all the... Uh, so this is an example of a patient. She was 49 years old, uh, and she was diagnosed with uh, CA breast, uh, uh, which was uh, in February 2021. She was hormone negative, her is positive. She was clinically T4 and 2 M0, BRCA positive patient, which was germline. So she received standard AC followed by Texol, underwent right MRM, and ALND. Next slide, please. Then she shall up within uh, six months, uh, right side of the chest, uh, a local disease, and there was a subpectral axial lymph node and bone mass were there. Next slide, please. So as uh, we know that she was, next slide. So there was again a biopsy was done, which was ERPR negative, HER2 2 plus fish negative, PDL1 CPS was more than 90%. So she was TNBC uh, with a uh, CPS of 90%. Started in November with Tamro, Gemcetamine, Carboplatin. Next slide, please. So she progressed in May 2020 uh, within six months of the treatment. Next slide, please. Since she was BRCA positive, she was started on Olaparib in January 2023 and in the end of May 2023, she developed new bone lesion and there was a new pulmonary nodules which were evident pet CT. Next slide, please. So she was started in June 2023 to TDXD. The first staging scan was almost CR and patient uh, was in CR for next six months. Next slide, please. So to summarize, next slide. So, so there is the first, the, so TDXD is the only HER2 directed therapy to provide significant survival benefit to patients with HER2 low and metastatic breast cancer after progression on standard therapy. So, uh, it nearly doubled the median PFS, six months or more increase in median ORS, and almost three times of the overall response rate. So, this is a drug which probably uh, will uh, evolve over the time. For now, timing is the second line drug in a HER2 low patient. That's all. Thank you. Yeah. So, thank you, Jitendra. So, uh, uh, what you consider her to low upfront, or if the patient develops recurrence and then the tumor nature suppose comes to be negative. Suppose first time the her two is one plus, 
then recurrence uh, adjuvant treatment was completed and the recurrence was developed and re repeat biopsy was suggestive triple negative so do you consider her to plus one in upfront setting or the recurrent setting was probably if we are able to do biopsy and it is negative we should treat like negative okay so still consider uh, in this case uh, we if the biopsy was not done then we, we can consider the upfront if we are if it is more only disease if we are not able to do biopsy patient was unknown receptor positive upfront we have given because my problem was that the patient who 70 percent with was uh, beautifully responding to any hormone receptor therapy with cities of inhibitor the problem what we face is 30 percent patient who progress very early and if those patients are hard to know and they are progress very early means within one scan those pro patient progressed so these patients, if they are hurt too low, probably those are the patients which will be benefited by it more. And those are the patients which are probably having more bone-only disease. So they are probably getting a biopsy with the So uh, in what setting? First line, second line, third line, fourth line? So so what? where you least, where you put this molecule TDX in fourth line or third line? At least, so sir, biology is important. If somebody who is hormone receptor differently, means we all have seen patients जिसको रैबिट से क्लियर पे या किसी पे भी डाला हार्मोन के साथ पहले स्कैन के पहले पेशेंट प्रोग्रेस कर गए सो दैट पेशेंट इज नेवर गोइंग टू रिस्पोंड टू एनी हार्मोन इफ दैट पेशेंट इज हर्ट टू नो प्रोबेबली वी कैन गिव दैट द एजेंट टू द पेशेंट सो अपरेंटली वी कैन ऐड और इफ इफ वी कैन गिव द चांस ऑफ एनी द ट्रायल द ट्रायल हार्ट पेशेंट कीमो फॉलोड बाय दिस प्रोबेबली कीमो डजंट वर्क इन दोस पेशेंट दैट दोस पेशेंट्स आर नाइटमेयर इफ दे आर हर्ट टू नो प्रोबेबली वी शुड गो इन इन uh, you your experience this? with this drug in hard to low? Have you used? I have not used it, although I have advised it. But experience with three other patients who progressed on CDK for inhibitor with, within two months of the therapy were very disciplined with chemotherapy. Okay, sir, is there your experience with this molecule in this hard to low positive? No. Sir, even in this hard to uh, positive uh, hard to positive metastatic setting, uh, the role. Have you tried? As per, as per the guidelines, yes. Uh, there is the wide separation of the curves looks very promising uh, because it's a ADC. So we feel that the there should be the this should be better than the combination of the pertuzumab and the uh, other combination, including the PDM one molecule. It's okay. a stronger drug. So, uh, uh, so, 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 sir, in her two positive patient, can we put on earlier lines? If the progression yes, on the Christogenium in future. Have you the first second line approval has? No, okay. see, my understanding this is approved uh, versus the uh, TDM1. Yeah. Yes, sir. For now, it is TDM1. On the place of TDM1. Sir, line future, one is so let's say future. let's say the clinical scenario is there where you want to use it in the first line is place of the TDM1. It's approved after uh, transtrigumab exposure. Yes. Let's say that the patient still has not been exposed till the second line. Uh, let's say somebody has given lepartinib and capsetabine. So I think it's still in contrast to the TDM1 you should give it, logically. Okay, sir. Even sir, even sir, the previous trial of this drug, where this drug was used in third and fourth line, almost 20% patients were exposed to TDM1 and the drug was effective on those. And we should not forget that the drugs like TDM1, they have failed in the new adjuvant and adjuvant setup. Yes, uh, in classical way, new adjuvant setup. So these drugs are basically <clears throat> in the first line or subsequent line contrast to the other NTHAR uh, single agent or combination. It's a stronger uh, ADC, I will say, in contrast to yes. the TDM1. So wherever yes. you feel that the TDM1 can be used in a metastatic setting, you can use it. Till you have the mature data of the adjuvant setting because new adjuvant TDM1 has failed. Sir, do you think that this is the game changer molecule uh, even in HER2 lower, even in HER2 positive patient? Because so, data is very strong. So, yes, because HER definition itself has changed because of these sort of uh, drugs or the concept. What you should label as the HER negative previously means. Uh, all 1 plus 0 and 2 plus fish negative or the uh, negative only for that purpose. Now we don't talk, we talk about the ultra negative, ultra low or the low 1 plus 
and the two plus certain uh, sort of this thing. So, so definitely it's a game changer. It's a new avenue for the management of the ER positive patient with the carrying the HER low like one plus or two plus fish negative patient. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Jitendra, uh, for this 